Hi, everybody. Ann Trufant. Thanks for joining us. I have the great joy of introducing Caroline Turner from England. Hello. Who has been a counselor at camp for several years, and this year she couldn't come, but she came to visit. She has a great story, and I can't wait for her to share that. So, Caro, tell us a little bit about you, and welcome. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Um, yeah, my story uh, came to camp about five years ago with my sister Camilla and had no idea what to expect. Um, I come from London, my family is not religious um, and had a very kind of normal London upbringing, work very hard, you know, um, enjoy life but had no idea of what God was and what that could mean to us. Um, and throughout that all, ever since I basically could talk, um, have had quite a severe stutter. So basically it's just when you can't get the words out. It comes in like all different types of forms. Um, and stuttering is weird because it's not, what people think it is it's not just the physical blocks it's so much more about it molds you into a person that is fearful of connecting because communication is all about connecting and sharing who you are and when you can't do that it does I think it does something to a person but anyway so lived with this stuff my whole life when I was about 13 years old my mum found this amazing speech program called the Maguire program, which basically gave me my voice, which was amazing. Um, it taught me how to work very hard. It taught me how to help other people with stutters. It really gave me that like foundation of um, what I'm doing now. Um, but again, I was definitely living in a place of fear and pressure to not stutter and pressure to be this person that I wasn't basically because that's how I talk it's sort of I mean you wouldn't know right now but <laughs> that is the way I speak sometimes but and then I came here after I'd just finished school I was 18 years old and I was the first time I'd ever heard things like you know you are loved just simply for who you are and you are safe in that and had people that saw this quality that I had that I knew I had from the Maguire program and from coaching and seeing these like transformations in people but that language that we have at camp I didn't have in my life it wasn't there and that's kind of where my now career choice which I'm trained to become a speech therapist um, and the plan is to open my own clinic and create sort of a, a world for people who stutter in something that's, that is actually going to help them something that is not going to be fear-based and you must not do this you must speak this way it's going to be a very like faith built environment for people to be safe and be themselves and heal from years of not being able to talk um but to do that I had to train to be a speech therapist so which is a story I want to get into a little yeah. later but so I think one of the things that we're doing we're doing a series on strengthening ourselves in the Lord and so much of that is minding our minds and I'd love for you to talk a little bit about your journey with that mm. it's everyone's battle yeah definitely I think like a lot of people don't really understand what that means like what minding your mind really is I think people think it's sort of um thinking about your feelings and trying to um be aware of them but the way I the way I think it means and the way it applies to my life is knowing what is lies and knowing what is not from God and then knowing what is the voice of God and that is difficult because sometimes we don't 
we don't have that clarity on where that voice is coming from but knowing the basic facts of like you are loved you are a child of god there is nothing you can do that will take me away from that you are you know you have the grace of god etc like um knowing those things i think is like the key to minding your own mind mm -hmm. because without that the lies just flood in and there's nothing for you to distinguish between in battle in that battle yeah. yeah and for me my stutter was a huge huge part of that because i was definitely left very much alone in that life experience in that battle it wasn't something that i was ever asked like how do you feel about it like are you doing how are you feeling about your stutter that was not a discussion that i had and it meant that for maybe 22 years i'm 25 now that dialogue mm -hmm. where there was no minding my own mind there was no knowledge of like real true facts of who i was was just completely taking over my brain and my identity and without god without the bible without having people there to tell you what is true and what is not I, it's almost impossible to come out of that place so and what helped you i think knowing uh, i mean the bible that's really the thing that was there and you and talking to people that really told me what was true and like where and you have a scripture that's very important to you yes it is something that has been coming up maybe for like a month and that is not normal for me at all that's not something that i have happen to be very often but it's this beautiful scripture it's 1 corinthians 2 um 30 and it says for it is not from man that we draw our life but from god um and i think what's coming up especially for me at the moment with like faith and prayer and everything and kind of knowing how saturated my life was with these lies and these things that just were not from god they were lies like the from the devil trying to distract me trying to to stop me healing from my own experiences trying to not let me give that back to people like the devil wants people to stutter he wants people to feel alone he doesn't want them to have that love and support and i think without the bible and without coming to camp and without being around like people who gave me that dialogue of like no one cares <laughs> about the stutter like it's irrelevant like nobody cares caroline like it's not a, it's not a big you. deal we just want to like we just want you to come as you are you know and i think that's that's what helped me slowly peeling back those years of um coping mechanisms and lies and seeing that and being aware of them because we can't address something unless we're aware of them right so and if i remember um, you really had struggles from friends, teachers, maybe mm -hmm. parents, whoever, just trying to care for you. But the way that it was coming out was in a way that basically said, poor Caroline, mm -hmm. you won't be able to do this. Yeah. Um, do I remember that correctly? No, absolutely. I mean, ever since I can remember, that's been the dialogue and you know, that's something I'm going to have to untrain out of my brain for the rest of my life. But it's, you know, it came from, I know it came from a good place right? because that's what trying people do, people you. that are trying to protect you. And I think yeah. when you are someone that struggles to talk, like that is, you're immediately going to think, okay, that person's vulnerable. I need, we need to protect them. We need to look after them. But when you tell someone that from such a young age, it, sh it kind of makes them makes that true it makes them be, like your body and your mind and your soul starts to believe those things and then you end up that's correct. creating it that's correct and it it's, makes it so difficult to take away that those lies because you've cr you've become that person the fragile um take it easy don't push yourself like you know 
go to maybe an easier university, do an easier course, don't have the big career, be right. do these things that we know is like safe and you can handle basically. I remember the day you were in my office many years ago where all of a sudden it was a cataclysm between all the lies of childhood and you realizing you didn't have to live those out anymore. Yeah. I, it was so much fun to witness the big <laughs> aha moment. I don't have to be that. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. And so where did you go from there? What What did you decide? I think, I just, I think once you realize there's another option and once you really start because you can hear these things and people that really love you can tell you the stuff over and over again but until you yourself really believe that it doesn't change anything right and from there I went to make decisions very much around my career about okay well if I know I'm this person and I know I am strong I am physically strong I am physically healthy I can do whatever I want to do through God I'm a good friend all, all these things and it's like I just thought like how unfair it is that there were all these other people with stutters and I know that because I know what it does to people who didn't have that right who don't know that and who are living in this like sat <laughs> heavy non-real existence almost where they're just trying to get through and I just I my whole being was just like I have to do something about this I can't and it I knew that that would help me as well because I would see myself in them and learn things from them and keep going through that journey yeah so you set off on this journey to become a speech therapist yeah and tell us about that stuttering is fear that is what it is it's a fear of something that it maybe started from like a childhood trauma or event but it's a fear of communicating with the world and I knew that the only way I could do that was in speech therapy and when I did the applications pretty much everyone in my life apart from um you or my boyfriend or like really close friends were just like no this is this is a difficult career like why would you want to do something that is going to take so much work and will mean that the life we viewed for you isn't isn't going to happen um but I knew it was I I knew in a way that I couldn't explain to people that weren't religious and didn't have that sense of like I know this like more of a fact than I'm breathing right now like I knew it in a sense of like this is not even an option <laughs> like I have to do this so that was Carol, yeah has it been your experience tell because I think this is so many of the people that you know we talk to and so many of the young adults that uh we work with have this idea that they're at some point going to arrive and it's just going to be smooth sailing and they're their mindset will never, you know, dip and they'll never, they're just going to get it. And no. tell us about the journey. Once you decided, I'm in, I'm doing this. Yeah. It's actually, I think a good way of describing it is it's like when you look at like a painting for the first time and you see, you know, wow, this is so beautiful and you get it. That was like that first initial moment of, okay, I've, I understand now. I get that this is what I'm supposed to do. I get that this is who I am. And then you think that's it. And you think that this, you're just going to always know for sure there's not going to be any difficulties. And then you step back and then something else happens and you look back at the, and there's more to the picture and there's more depth more to it more. and there's more to discover. And I think that's the way we need to look at our lives and about our relationship with God because you know, it's almost like when a baby is trying to learn how to talk. He is never going to talk to us in this like complex, crazy language that we're never going to understand. It's like a parent to a child. They slowly build it up bit by bit by bit. And that is what I think I'm I think it's what we're all experiencing where day by day, year by year, we are given something new to learn, something new that he's like, OK, let's think about this now. Let's push this bit open and show you that there's this way of thinking and then there's these people that you could get in touch with or this and it's 
it's a gradual relationship with the world that's not just all at once, but it's bit by bit. And we can never predict what is next. Well, so when you jumped into this school uh, for speech therapy, uh, you feel that a lot of what you've seen, if I am hearing you correctly, is the wrong way to approach stuttering for children. Yeah. So in your um, forging ahead to create the right way mm. uh, to help children with stuttering, have you encountered smooth sailing or how's that been? No, no, no smooth sailing. Um, the first real block was just the course itself. It was... There was so many other things to study. Stuttering was maybe a tenth of my course this year. It was a case of I have to qualify to do what I need to do, so I need to focus on other things, not just stuttering. Um, I used to have a Instagram page where I talked about my stutter and shared that dialogue, and I knew that that wasn't where my energy needed to be put. So all my kind of stuttering outlets were kind of gone. Um, so I got distracted. I forgot what the why I was doing what I was doing. Um, and then in about March, I was on placement with, you know, she's a great speech therapist. Um, I think, you know, she works very hard. She taught me a lot. Um, we were talking online and um, she kind of pulled this weird face. And I was like, oh, gosh, what what's she going to say? And it was something around the lines of, you know, if you want to become a speech therapist, stuttering is not something you can do. You must be able to communicate fluently with your clients, with the parents, with, um, you know, it's just physically something that I can't do. And she was like, what can we do to stop that from happening? And it was like, do you, do you have the golden answer? Like, do you have the answer to stop people from talking the way that they do naturally and I didn't realize until maybe a few weeks later how devastating that was um I think anyone's biggest fear being confirmed by someone who is teaching them and mentoring them is devastating um however I know that God is funny and he has very very clever ways of being like wakey wakey <laughs> and I think that was his way of one reminding me of how painful it is to have a stutter every day and have that re constant rejection which I don't stutter all the time so I forget sometimes and that was just like a palpable reminder Kaboom. it was just I couldn't have been reminded more of why I was doing what I was doing and then I mean, the main thing I realized was that she'd missed the entire point of why I was doing what I was doing. God has not asked me to become a speech therapist to help children with autism or to help with speech sounds. He, I've been given this crystal clear vision that someone like her isn't supposed to understand because she hasn't, he didn't tell her that so why would she understand what I what I see and what I know like to my core um she wouldn't and knowing what is real and that is the voice of of God that is what is real and not listening to these lies of people's doubts and fears and insecurities and yeah it's amazing so what um what are two or three things that have most helped you strengthen yourself in the Lord and keep yourself on track? Good question. I'd say the people you keep in your lives is so important. Um, knowing who to listen to, knowing that just because people are well-intentioned, that doesn't mean that that's what you need to hear to really um, strengthen yourself. Um, I think my career choice has really, really helped that because it reminds me on a daily basis, like I've been chosen by a God to, to do this. That gives me strength. Um, but really just, I mean, the, the 
Bible and praying and not being picky about like how I pray, where I pray, who I pray with. It's just God is in my life and I want that and I will do whatever I need to get that. And it can be in any form it wants to be. You know, it doesn't have to be sitting down in church praying, although obviously that is a great way to do it, but it, it can be, it can look however it needs to look. So, Carol Turner, is anything impossible for God? Only if we put limits on okay. him. Uh, are you putting any limits on your path forward, my friend? Nope. No, I'm expecting big miracles and big things. And I don't, my new way of trying to look at things is, I don't want to do things the way I want to do them. I want to do them the way he wants to do them. I want to clear every path I can, every mindset, every, I want to just, and let him fill that space. That's, that's the way I want it done because that would, will be amazing. I know that would be amazing. And we pray that your family and all of London stands in awe at what you have created and that the children are richly, richly blessed by your ministry and your and your uh, skill set. So any word of encouragement for those watching? Those who are doubting that they're hearing right or don't believe they have what it takes to do what's on their heart? I think knowing that it's not about like how you feel and not, as in obviously how you feel is important, but knowing what is true and grounding yourself in that and always knowing that like God is fully for you like there is nothing you can do that he is will make him any less for you and he is so desperate to be with you on that path and the way your life is the people you surround yourself with that is not reflective of your relationship with with God it is not it does it to the one doesn't have to be defined by the other it's a yeah god is for you fully for you and loves you more than you can possibly imagine and that is the main truth that you always must think about and the rest of it will come from that but anything that's not of that truth is i just not. was closing my eyes thanking god for the journey <laughs> uh it has been such a privilege to be on that journey with you for those moments years ago when you had no clue that you were loved, mm -mm. no clue that the Lord was for you. It is such a an everyday miracle that you know and that you're telling the people. Yeah. Um, so if anybody needs to be encouraged, do the do, walk the walk, give it the time it needs to unfold. We, we live in a society where everything is instant. We can get instant gratification, so many things so fast. And this journey of faith, we have to marinate. We get a little piece. The Lord gives us the scripture. Mm -hmm. He highlights it. We know it keeps coming up, as you say, for a whole month. We need to marinate in that. What? Juice it. Nurse it. What does God want? We don't want to miss one thing out of that truth. It is such a gift, number one, to see you, and number two, <laughs> Uh, just to see where you've come and know where you're going. The Lord has such a call on you, and he has a call on you too. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just, Lord, we just ask that eyes are open today in a way, Ephesians 1.18, that the eyes of our heart are flooded with light, that we know the hope to which we are called in Christ Jesus, that we know that nothing is impossible to God, and that everybody is here for a purpose. Mm -hmm. for a purpose and it's to bless and love the world in jesus name and we just ask lord that you make that clear uh, and, and it's so exciting yes it's just an exciting thing to to be in that relationship with god because yes. we have no idea what what he's going to do yep every day we have no clue and that to me is much more exciting than trying to figure out all the right. other stuff. You've got to look at the facts of it and at God, not try to wade through all the other stuff. All the other voices. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank for having you me. <laughs>